Welcome to the Brassian Woodwind Shop. This is the sixth video in the Herald of Trumpet Restoration series. Last week I got the dents out of this part of the bell, and today I'm going to get the dents out of this part of the bell. The way I'm going to remove the dents on this part of the bell is going to be very similar to the way I did on the other part, so I'm going to go more quickly through this one today. And if I have time, I will put the two parts together. This part of the bell has been crimped very badly and the metal is bent right over and there's no space to get into right there. So I'm going to start by taking this pliers and trying to bend this carefully. I'm going to try to do it without cracking this. Last week I showed you this pliers and I did not know exactly what it was called. It has a rounded inside on one of the jaws and then the other jaw is flat. One of my viewers left a comment and said that this is called a half round pliers and it's used in jewelry mostly but you can get it on Amazon and I am going to leave a link for that in the description below so you can uh, buy that on Amazon if you would like. And this pliers, um, I don't use it that often but it's very helpful in uh, things like this. When you're trying to round out the metal and you use a flat jawed pliers it can leave marks on it but this one since it is rounded on one side if you use the rounded part on the inside, you can use a pliers without causing damage, or at least not nearly as much damage. Uh, most of the time you can do it with no damage. But I'm just going to keep opening that up just a little bit. And again, when you do this job, you when you're dealing with dents like this, you need to just work on the dent a tiny little bit at a time. You cannot get all the dent out at once because then you'll end up with cracked tubing or something else, but it won't be good. I have the metal bent back a little bit. Now what I'm going to do to open up farther is I'm going to use leverage as I use this. I'm going to push on it with my thumb and that will help to open it up more. And I think I can probably get in there very soon, at least part of the way. Here are some of the tools I will be using and it will be in this order. This is a small burnisher and usually it's used to smooth out metal but this time I'm going to use it to try to open it up and it has a fairly pointed end and it's uh, somewhat flat also so that will help fit in there at the beginning when it is not open very far. Then when it gets open a little farther I have a larger burnisher. I'm going to try to open that up a little bit more and it's a little bit wider so that should open it up to the point where I can get this mandrel in there and this is usually used for trumpet lead pipes but you can use it for whatever you need to use it for and then this one it has a little bit of a larger diameter at the end once I open it up a little with this one this then this one should fit in there I'm done with the pliers at least for now now I'm going to open it up a little bit with the burnisher and it, it is opening up quite nicely at least for now. I can tell you that I am going to have problems because this is really sharp and it's crimped tightly right here. So that's going to be a little more difficult to get out and also on the other side. Probably what I'm going to do when I open it up a little bit farther is I'm going to start tapping on it and hopefully that can open it up without cracking it any more than it already is. So I'm just going to try to open it up a little farther. And I have to be careful because of the angle this is at. If I just shoved it in there, it would make a big dent coming from the inside right here. So I'm going to just push that lightly. And just again, you just do it a little bit at a time. And you go slow and steady with dents like this. You should go slow and steady with every dent, but especially dents that are really bad. I think I'm about done with this one. I will move up to the next size burnisher. The burnisher is rounded on one side and it's slightly rounded on the other side, a little more flat on one side than the other. I'm going to use the round side to round out one of the sides of the dent and then turn it around and work on rounding out the other side of the dent too. Okay, 
I might be to the point where I can fit a mandrel in there. Let's see. Yes. Oh, yeah, that fits with a lot of room to spare. This is what I'm working with now. The mandrel goes in that far, and I'm going to try to get in a little farther and open it up a little more. As soon as I said that, I realized I should probably use this pliers to help round out these dents a little bit. I'm going to be careful with this because you can do damage with the points of these, but I... I but I'll be careful and just round that out a little bit. And then the other one. Now I'm going to go back to the half round pliers. And that's for that little part right there. Right at the end it curls up. And I want to curl that back down because if I get the dents out, with that still curled up, that's going to crack all along the edge. So I want that straightened out before I round out the tubing anymore. So I'm going to try to straighten that out. Okay, that's looking good. I put the mandrel in the vise, and now I'm going to put the bell section on there slowly, and I'm going back and forth, opening it up just a little bit at a time, and as it opens up I'm pushing it onto the mandrel. The mandrel is tapered, so every time I push it on it's opening it up a little bit farther, and I'm almost running out of mandrel here. And then I'll move up to the next one. Actually, before I move up to the next one, I'm going to back it up a little bit and try to work on the edges of the dents that are really sharp. I'm going to do that with a Delrin mallet and with one hand I'm going to push down on it so it's down as far as it will go onto the mandrel and then tap and try to open that up a little bit and I think it is opening it up. It feels like it's going down a little bit. And now I'll do the other side. As I'm doing this, I'm watching closely to see if anything bad is happening. If a crack starts opening up or something like that, then I'll just stop. Okay, that rounded it out a little more and opened it up a little more. So now I'm going to go to the next size up mandrel. There's the next mandrel. The so same thing here. I'm going to put that on there and open it up as I go. And once it starts offering a little resistance, then I'll stop and then start tapping it. good so far. And again I'm going to back it up so I have a smaller diameter to work with because a smaller diameter is closer to the smaller diameter of the oval part here. So I'm going to open that up a little bit more or I should say round it out a little bit more. And there is a crack there that I'm watching. I don't want that crack to get any worse. So now that's what I'm working with. It's turned into an oval. Now I'm going to get this to the end of this mandrel and start working on the next mandrel. Let's see how it's going so far. Yep, time to tap again. So there's the next mandrel. And I'll put that in there as far as it will go without pushing on it too hard. And keep tapping. I'll show you what I'm working with now. It is almost round, so the danger of cracking is a lot less now than it was. But I'm still going to keep my eye on that part right there that had the really sharp part of the dent in it. And I'm going to make sure that that does not crack any farther. Or at least not if I can help it. I've been tapping for about 20 minutes and it's pretty round. That's about as round as it's going to get. If you turn it sideways you can see that it's still very jagged though. 
I have the dents out of this part of the bell, but I notice that it is bent, so I'm going to try to straighten that out. I'm going to do that with a trombone slide mandrel, but I only need the trombone slide mandrel sticking out of the vise a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this into the vise, but if I use the, the regular V-block to chuck it into the vise, it would ruin the mandrel. So I have these lead chuck jaws that I put into the vise like that, and that allows me to be able to put the trombone mandrel in without damaging it. Then I'm going to put the end of the bell onto that, and this is a side with the tuning slide part onto it. So I'm going to put that onto there. What I'm going to do is turn the bell around, and I'm going to figure out where it's bent. I think it's bent pretty evenly through this section. So that's where I'm going to bend it back. Now I have to find the high spot. There's the high spot right here. Now I'm going to bend the bell down, but I have to be very careful because if I just push, what's going to happen is it's not going to move, not going to move, not going to move, and then all of a sudden it's going to bend all the way, and I'm going to have the same problem here as I had here. And I don't want that problem again. I'm going to put my hand on my chest so that when it bends, it's just going to bend a little bit. And then with my other hand, I'm going to put that here so that it bends in the right place and I'm not going to push hard. I'm also going to use a flexing motion. The flexing motion is when you just push with little bursts and not just push, 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 and then it bends. Here I go. I'm, going, I'm pushing down a little bit. I'm trying to feel if it's bending. Okay, now I think I bent it, but I'm not totally sure. I'm going to turn it around. Okay, I did bend it, and now the high spot is on the other side, so I went a little too far, but not too much too far. So I'm going to do the same thing the other direction, and let's see, it's pretty close, but it still is going up and down. There's the high spot. Just a little push this time. Okay, I'm close. Right there. Okay, I don't think I moved it at all that time, so a little bit more. No, high spot is about right there. I'm getting close, so I just keep doing this until it is straight, and it might take a few times. It could, it could be 10, 15 times, but I just do it as many times as I need to to straighten it out, being very careful not to go too far. Okay, I think that's good. I'm turning it, and it's not really going up and down very much. I also noticed on this part of the bell that the end is bent up a little bit. The problem with straightening that is I don't have any leverage to work with. Because it's bent about right here, I can't really push on this part because it's not going to bend well. So what I think I'm going to need to do is wait until I solder the other part of the bell onto there, and then straighten it out. I have the dents out of these two parts of the bell, so they're almost ready to go back together. But before I do that, there are a couple things I want to do. This is the tuning slide section of the bell, and it's very dirty, and it's keeping it from going into the other section nicely. So I want to chem clean this. I'm going to chem clean this section while I'm working on a few dents on the other section. It has a crease right at the bell rim, and then there are a few other smaller dents. I have the mandrel in the vise, and there are a few small dents that I want to get out. Nothing serious, but I don't want the dents there anyway. This dent is a very smooth dent, so instead of using the end of the mandrel, I'm going to use up a little farther. And that one is about out. There's another one in the throat of the bell, so I'm going to get the throat mandrel for that one. This mandrel is short, and it has a fairly large diameter, and it's used for trumpet bell throats. The throat of a bell is this section, and usually that's where they put the logo on the bell, but it's about right here, and that mandrel covers that area. There's a small dent that I'm going to get out, and I know that you guys like to see me get dents out, so I'm going to put the camera right on there, and push that, oh, I, I pushed it out without even trying. I dent came out very easily, at least it came out most of the way very easily. I was trying to get the dent set up, I was trying to find where it was, and then it just like came right out. So I'm going to finish it up right now, 
get underneath it like there. And again, that was a very smooth dent. And smooth dents usually you get with the side of the mandrel, and the sharp dents you usually have to push out with the end of the mandrel. Let's see if there are any more. Here's one. I'm going to get that with the end of the mandrel. When I'm pushing the dent across the mandrel, I'm not just pushing hard the whole time. I push lightly, and then when I get up to the dent, I push hard for, uh, for a very short period of time. When I get to the other side, then I let up off the pressure. And I'll see if there are any more dents in the throat of the bell. I do not see any. And that just leaves the bell flare dent right there. Oh, you can see my face, the reflection of my face in the bell. That does not look very good, does it? The tool I'm going to use for this is called a trumpet dent roller and it has a roller on the end of it and this works very well for getting those dents out in trumpet bell flares. I also have a larger one that I use on low brass bells. There's the dent. I'm going to start at one end of the dent and work my way to the other dent, but I need to make sure that the roller is touching the bell on the other side where the dent is, because if I just roll it across, it may or may not touch where the dent is. So what I need to do is put it at the angle where the bell dent is going to make contact with the roller. Also, I'm going to put my thumbs over where the dent is, because when this dent comes out, I want the bell flare, the part that is bent up, I want that to bend back. I do not want this metal to come up. What I want is I want this part to go down to get where it's supposed to be. So here I go. And I, I, my thumbs are going to be over where the dent is, so I'm not going to be able to see it. But I should be able to feel where it is and follow the dent pretty closely. So I'm pushing down with my thumbs pretty hard. And at the same time, I am trying to follow the contour of the dent by changing the angle of the bell. And I'm changing the angle of the bell with my shoulder. It's hard to see because I do not have the camera on that. But I have the, I'm resting the bell on my shoulder and I'm moving my shoulder up and down to try to match where the dent is on the mandrel. Okay, well there it is. It's out most of the way. I think I'm going to touch it up a little bit. Right here there's still a dent and on the other side. So I'm going to touch that up. And it's almost done. Let's see. That should do it. Yeah, that dent is probably about as good as it's going to get. So I'm just going to leave it. There's a dent from the other side. That looks good. So I'm going to get the other part of the bell from the chemicals. So this section went into the chemicals and it's a lot cleaner than it was. So I'm going to put that in the slide expander to hold it. I'm not expanding the slide, I'm just holding it. And then I'm going to use the white buffing compound on the wick material and clean that up. And then I'll turn it and clean up the other side. Yeah, there was some stuff that was caked on there, pretty thick. So that needed to come off so that it could be tuned easily and so that the bell could go in and out. Okay, that goes in a lot easier now. Dents did go a lot quicker on this part of the bell than on this one, but time is up, so I'm going to end the video here. I was hoping to get these two parts put back together in this video, but that's going to wait for next week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and look in the description below for links to other related videos.